the name of Jesus we give you thanks in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus let the believers shout the believers amen let's celebrate our papa in the house celebrate our mama with a clap do that with a joyful shout somebody shout glory we celebrate your papa we love your mama I'm all satire we can't wait we can't wait we can't wait lift your two hands above your head put them together let joyfully shout as we receive our papa Dr. Amen Damina glory 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 he says and everyone in the temple speaks of his glory Glory. Glory. Father, we rejoice that tonight we have this another opportunity to fellowship in the light of your word. It is the entrance of your word that giveth light and giveth understanding to the simple. And so we rejoice that tonight that we have access into revelation knowledge. The eyes of each one's understanding flooded with light. Clarity comes by the teaching of God's word. Your people are built up, equipped, edified, and Jesus is glorified. So we give you praise that at the end of the service will all be the better for it. In Jesus' precious name and every believer says a powerful amen. amen. Lift your right hands to heaven. Let's release our faith together as we say these words. I am born of God. I am born of the word. The word of God is my nature. I do not struggle to do the word. I do the word naturally. Therefore today, I will understand the word of his grace. I will be built up. By the end of this service, I will never be the same. Never ever be the same again. In Jesus name. And every believer says a powerful amen. amen. It's 30 days of glory 2022. Amen. Glory. Amen. Grab your pen, your notebook, your Bible. You can be seated with your sweet smart self this evening. Oh my goodness. Glory to God. We want to welcome everybody connected by way of Kingdom Life Network, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all of the social media community, brothers and sisters online. We're glad to have all of you in the fellowship of the saints. The light is shining brighter than ever before, and we're glad that an equipping is taking place wherever you are around the world. Do me the favor like you've always done. We have a vision to reintroduce Jesus to this generation, equipping the believer to know who you are in Christ what you have in Christ and what Christ can do through you. That vision is our mandate to the nations of the earth. So help us share the videos. We, you know, like the videos, touch the thumb button there on the, on, the, on the page and also subscribe to our YouTube channel and make sure you engage in the course of the service. That helps us with the kind of visibility that we require globally to get this gospel to the ends of the earth. Also, I want to welcome the radio audience in Akwaibom State. Wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, I'd like you to do me the favor. Call a friend, a family member, ask them to tune in right now. Life is flowing through the airwaves. All of the cities in surround the world, campuses all over the globe, we're glad to have all of you connected tonight. What a joy to have all of you in different nations and continents connected to the world of life. Many of our coordinators are here. I'm sure tomorrow in the midweek service we take time to recognize all of them. But we're glad to have all of the coordinators that have attended physically the conference this year and all of the citizens that have traveled down from all over the world to be part of what we are doing here in the house. Can I have a powerful amen? So we began looking at the true worship of God yesterday. The true worship of God. John chapter 4 from verse 19. John chapter 4 from verse 19. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Next verse. We're going to verse 24. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And you say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus said unto her woman, Believe me, the hour, the hour cometh. When you shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Next verse. You worship, you know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. Next verse. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, which is reality. 
For the father seeketh such to worship him. Can I have a powerful amen? So yesterday we began to trace, you know, um, the hour. And uh, we came to a conclusion that the hour was the hour of his resurrection. The hour, it was not a time or a date. It was connected to an event. That hour was connected to an event. John chapter 17, verse number 1. John chapter 17, verse 1. This word spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come, the event, the hour. Glorify thy son, that thy son also may glorify thee. So the hour has to do with an event. Then we established that when we say you have received the spirit, or when we say you have received eternal life, or when we say you are a son of God, or when we say Jesus died, he was buried, and on the third day he rose again, we are saying the same thing. Because salvation is a product of death, burial, and resurrection. Eternal life is a product of the death, burial, and the resurrection, which is the event of the hour. The hour gave us all of these realities. The death, burial, resurrection made us sons of God. The death, burial, resurrection gave us eternal life. The death, burial, resurrection gave us a union with God where we are now his righteousness in Christ Jesus by faith. And then we zeroed in yesterday and we looked at some words. The first word we looked at yesterday was the word proskunetis. Proskunetis. And we said that is the word in the Greek for worshiper and it only appears one time. Taking from another word, proskunio. Proskunio. The word pros means before. Konio means to touch. So, we said it has to do with symbols of adoration, obeisance in their culture. They kissed in worship, they knelt in worship, and they bowed in worship. They fell down in worship, and they paid homage. So, we established that worship is not singing a song. Worship is not singing a song. But, you can sing a song in worship but worship is not singing a song we said a true worshiper is not a solo voice singer and then we took a, a trip yesterday from matthew chapter 2 verse number 2 please pay attention matthew chapter 2 verse number 2 saying where is he that is born king of the jews for we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship the wise man traveled to where he was. Secondly, they bowed down literally before him to worship. Observe that the wise men didn't come with instruments. They only came with themselves and a gift to worship. That's very instructive. We said in the law of first mention, the first time the word worship appears in scripture. Is in Genesis chapter 22 when Abraham was going to Mount Moriah to go with Isaac. And on the way in verse 6, he said to the servants, you stay here. I and the young lad shall go yonder to worship and we will come back. There were no instruments, there was no choir, but they were going to worship. And that's where the original meaning of the word worship comes from. There was no singing, there was no instrumentation. It was just two people who went to Mount Moriah and caught a clear revelation of God and came back. And it was called worship. So worship is not a song. Worship is an act from the heart of adoration. An act from the heart of honor, respect, where you pay homage, obeisance before God. Also observed in verse 11 of Matthew chapter 2. Please pay attention. Matthew chapter 2 verse number 11. And when they were coming to the house, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. Observe every time they met Christ or met, you know, they came to the presence of God. They were, they were either kneeling down, falling down, or bowing down 
in worship. Put up that scripture again. They fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. So we said, when they came, they came before. And they brought something tangible in worship. They brought something tangible in worship. We also established yesterday that Satan said to Jesus in Matthew chapter 4 verse 9. Please pay attention. Matthew chapter 4 verse 9. And he saith unto Jesus, all these things will I give thee. If thou wilt fall down, see that, and worship me. Watch Jesus' response in verse 10. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee behind me, or get thee hence, Satan. For it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. So Jesus introduced a new reality to worship. Worship is service. You can't say you are in worship and you are not serving. So worship means to revere, to respect, to pay obeisance, and very critically to serve. A worshiper is one who is involved in service. If you are a worshiper and you are not serving, you are a pretender. Worship without service is pretense. Your singing and offering time, all of that put together... It's part of worship. Then we establish another word apart from that word, proskuneo, a word called laterio. Laterio, L-A-T-R-E-A. -E Oftentimes used for temple service. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. Romans chapter 12, verse number 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies... A living sacrifice. Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Your reasonable service. Many of us just like revelation, revelation, revelation. The word present your bodies is present the union. I beseech you therefore that you present the union. The Greek word parastemi. The union, a living sacrifice. Present the union, a living sacrifice. The Greek word, zutuzen. It takes you back to Leviticus, Deuteronomy, Exodus, Numbers. The service of the temple. Living sacrifice, wholly acceptable, which is your reasonable service. Well, you will see it in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 1. I like to read that one. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 1, chapter 9 verse 6, chapter 9, and then Romans chapter 9 verse 4. Then verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. Look at verse 4 of Hebrews 9, which had the golden censer. And the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold. Wherein was the golden pot that had manna. And Aaron's rod that budded. And the tables of the covenant. Look at it. Romans chapter 9 verse 4. Romans 9 4. Who are Israelites? To whom pertained the adoption. And the glory. And the covenants. And the giving of the law. And the service of God and the promises. So he takes you back to the Old Testament text, as we call them, how the priests will wait to offer things, how they consecrated and dedicated their lives to the service of God. All the priests of the Old Testament, they consecrated and dedicated their lives to the service of God. Now observe, he said, this is the summation of all my insight and revelation. 
In chapter 1 of Romans, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It's the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jews and then to the Gentiles. And therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. So he begins to deal with the revelation of righteousness which comes through the gospel of Christ Jesus. Then he moves on to chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4. He begins to deal with justification by faith. What shall we then say that Abraham, our father, has found pertaining to, to, to faith? He said, if he go whatever he got by works, he has well of the glory, but not before God. Then he says, Abraham believed God and it was credited to his account for righteousness. Then he said, unto him that walketh not, but believeth in him that justifieth the ungodly, it is accounted to him for righteousness. Even as David described the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed no sins. Now, so brother Paul is dealing with the revelation and unfolding the revelation. He gets to chapter 5, he gets to chapter 6 where he begins to deal with the law and grace. Then he gets to chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us. Who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. Then he begins to talk about they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. And they that are after the spirit do mind the things of the spirit. Then he began to talk about to be carnally minded is dead. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the spirit of Christ it is none of his. Are we still in the building? So Paul is building a case. He's building a case. He's moving from, you know, revelation to revelation. Then he moves up to chapter 9 and deals with Israel and the, 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 the doctrine of election. He comes to chapter 10. He says, brethren, my heart's desire for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge they go about establishing their own righteousness not realizing that there is a righteousness that is not of the law but a righteousness of the faith of jesus christ so he begins to pray for israel and then chapter 9 he continues with his prayer for israel once he's done with his prayer for israel he now says i beseech you therefore brethren on the basis of all of this revelation the summary of all of this revelation is that you present your union a living sacrifice unto God, which is holy and acceptable, which now becomes your reasonable service. So, the service of God is the end point of revelation. The end point of revelation knowledge is service. It's not accumulation of head knowledge. Is service. You're growing in knowledge. You're learning revelation so you can serve the purpose of God. Glory to God. To present this union. To present this gift of righteousness. To present this identification that we have with Christ. It now becomes worship. So the verb of that word laterio is the verb latero. The very word Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4 verse 10. Put it up again. Let me read that Matthew chapter 4 verse number 10. Pay attention. Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shall thou serve. Worship that is only done in singing and in tears is deceit. Worship that is only done in singing and in tears is manipulation. Worship must be done with service. Jesus quoted from Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 13. Why are we saved? Why are we redeemed? Why do we have the gift of the Holy Spirit? Why are we called believers? Luke chapter 1 verse 74 
to seven, 74 and 75. Luke 1, 74. That he will grant unto us that we being delivered. Oh, glory to God. We being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve. Being delivered. So the intent, the purpose, eh? the plan, the design. Okay? Uh, are you following? The, the, the plan of God, the intent of God for delivering us from the hands of the enemy. Colossians 1, 3, 1 12. Giving thanks unto the Father who had made us meet. Meet there is not suya. It's old English word for qualified. Who has made us qualified meet to be partakers. They that have a part to be partakers of the inheritance. But observe, you can only enjoy the inheritance with the saints that are in light. There are saints in darkness. With the saints in light. That's where you partake of this inheritance. Partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Next verse. Who have delivered us from the power of darkness. It's been done already. And had translated. Look at the tenses. Translated. Will not translate. Had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins then Luke now says in Luke 174 observe Luke 1 says, that he will grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear but the spirit of adoption whereby we cry that's the worship of the new creation we cry Abba Father oh yeah, badagana. give me verse 75 I like verse 75 of same look that we might serve him in holiness and righteousness before him worship must be before him or towards him before him all the days of our lives are you still here so the essence for the exodus is to serve he told moses tell pharaoh let my son go why that he may serve me let my son go that he may serve me so the essence for salvation, the essence for deliverance, the essence for freedom from sin and Satan is not to have a nice time. Mm -mm. There is no neutral ground. I am free from Satan, but I will not serve. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. You are free from Satan not to be free, but to, to serve. You are freed from that kingdom where you served sin. You are no more a servant of sin. You are now a servant of righteousness. Which means you serve God's purpose to your generation. Are we together in the building? You are freed to serve. Not to have a nice time. To serve. The word lotterio. Look at Luke chapter 2, verse 37. Talking about this widow woman, Luke 2, 37. And she was a widow of about four score and four years. 84 years, right? 84 years woman. 84 years. Which departed not from the temple. But served God. That's a worshiper. Oh yes. And look at how she served God with fastings and prayers night and day. She served God with fastings and prayers night and day. If we look at the Luke rendering and the Matthew rendering of that word lotterio, it was used in the temple. It's temple worship. And in the temple, you bring sacrifices. You bring things and bring a show of that service. The list of worship 
the list that is where you have not really worshipped. The list of worship is singing in worship. That's the list. That's the basest form of worship. In Acts 7.7 7 and Acts 7.42, 7, it is repeated. You can write it down for further study. Acts 7.7, 7, Acts 7.42. Give me Acts 24 verse 14. Acts 24 14. But this I confess unto thee, that after the way which they call heresy, so worship I the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written where? In the law and in the prophets. So, when you study the scriptures in the light of Christ, you are in worship. When you are studying the scriptures in the light of Christ, that study of the scriptures, which brings about the eusubia. You know the Greek word now? Our view of God in Christ. We see God, the word godliness. Keboyada. Paul says, and without controversy, great is the, is the mystery, the mysterion of Eusubia. The mystery of, of our view in God or our view of God in Christ. That God became a man. Seeing God in a man is worship. The revelation of God in a man is worship. The worship of God comes via revelation. That's why they that worship must, must, not could, not might, must worship where? In spirit and in reality. The reality there is being able to see Christ beyond the shadows. Beyond the ceremonies, beyond the drama, you see Christ as he is revealed via the instrument of the scriptures. So our worship of God is that we see God well in Christ. Are you still here? So Paul says, I worship the God of my fathers. How did Paul serve God? Not by singing, but by the dedicated, devoted service he gave in his worship dedicated devoted service he gave in his worship ladies and gentlemen look at me for a minute when we drop our bodies and put on immortality many people will be in eternal shock eternal surprise that they thought they worship God while on earth but they never worship God one time Rather, they worshipped themselves. You know, a song like, Me and no go so far, is not worship. It's selfishness. You are worshipping yourself. Watch. Acts 13.1 Stay with me. Now there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger Lucius of Syrian and Manian which had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch and Saul. And next verse, as they ministered, as they did what? That's worship. As they ministered to the Lord. The ministry was to the Lord, not to themselves. They were not singing self and grandizement songs as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. So it was all to the Lord. The focus was the Lord. The center of attention was the Lord. And when they focused on the Lord in worship, the Holy Ghost said, the Holy Ghost said, As they minister to the Lord. As they set their desires, set their motives, set their hearts on the Lord in worship. While fasting and prayer, their heart being on the Lord is worship. 
They may not have been singing a song. Just their heart set on the Lord. Thou shalt keep him in perfect peace. Whose heart is stayed on thee. Because he trusts in thee. Glory. Acts 26, 7. Write down for further study because of time. Romans chapter 1, verse 9, verse 1. Put chapter 1, verse 9. Put it up for me on the screen. Romans chapter 1, verse 9. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his son. Kayada. I love brother Paul. Whom I serve in the spirit. And this is how I serve. In the gospel of his son. That without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. So, teaching the gospel of Christ is worship. As I'm teaching now, I am in very deep worship. I'm not crying. I'm not weeping. I'm serving. Because there can be no genuine worship without service. Satola. In Romans chapter 3 verse 3. Let's see brother Paul again. Romans chapter 3 verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? And Paul answered, God forbid. Romans 9.9. 9. I mean Hebrews 9.9. 9. Put it up. Which was a figure, the Old Testament temple worship, where they brought animals, was a figure for the time then present, in which were offered both gifts and sacrifices that could not make him that did the service perfect, as pertaining to conscience. So they were offering sacrifices in service to God with dead conscience. Because their conscience has not been purged from dead works to serve the living God. But in our case, our conscience has been purged. Christ has ascended into our hearts. So we worship in spirit. In a pure spirit. In a holy spirit. Now nothing is wrong with gifts and sacrifices. It's just that their conscience was not perfect. Read verse 14 of that Hebrews chapter 9. Oh glory to God. How much more? How much more? Shall the blood of Christ. Who through the eternal spirit. Did you see? Jesus was offered through the eternal spirit. Which means his offering was not liquid blood. Eternal spirit. That's why we don't sprinkle the blood. Because it's not liquid. Through the eternal spirit. Offered himself. So the offering. Was not liquid blood. The offering was himself. That's why numbers will say the life of all flesh is in the blood. So blood is life. So when we say Jesus offered his blood, what are we saying? Jesus offered his life. Do you sprinkle life? No. So that's why you don't sprinkle the blood. It's just religious hogwash. He says offered himself without spot to God. Purge your conscience. So watch this. So the offering to God was the purging of your conscience. You didn't get that. When we say Jesus offered himself to God, that is that offering himself to God was taking up residence inside you. That residence in you was the purging of your conscience. So Jesus did not ascend to a planet. He ascended into your heart and his residence in your heart was the offering to God. Am I communicating at all? 
Now that is in your heart, he has purged you from dead works, rituals. He has purged you from types and shadows, dead works. He has purged you from make believe. Olive oil is a make believe. The reality is Christ inside the believer. I don't know if I'm teaching here. Purge your conscience from dead works. Why? To serve the living God. So my service is not going to be worship if my conscience has not been purged. It is the purging of my conscience that makes my service worship. The purging of my conscience. And that was done once by Christ Jesus. Are we still here? So, by redemption, we can now serve God. Just like Hebrews 12, 28 said. Hebrews 12, 28. Therefore, we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be removed or moved. Let us serve grace. Whereby, we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. The fire there is the consumption of our sins on the cross. So the consumption took place on Christ. He doesn't consume anybody. He consumed himself on our behalf. Just like the fire consumes the animal sacrifices under the law of Moses. The worship of God is beyond singing. Some people will even sing and disobey their pastor. Pastor said two minutes. They sing four minutes. They are no more in worship. They are in entertainment. Because if you are truly in worship, two minutes will be two minutes. In worship, obedience is key. You don't worship on your terms. You worship on his terms. And he has put an authority over you that said, anything within two minutes will be worship. Anything outside two minutes will not be worship. <laughs> Singing is only a demonstration of worship. It is not worship itself. Worship without tangible, impactful, noticeable servanthood is deceit. Please, that's very important. Worship without tangible, impactful, noticeable servanthood is deceit. Remember, our text on redemption, our text on the resurrection, by the redemption and the resurrection, the new creation makes us true worshippers as a status. We are true worshippers. That's our status. And the proof that we are true worshippers finds expression in service. You are no more praying for God to make you a true worshipper. If you are asking God to make you a true worshipper, it means get born again. The day you got born again, you were born a true worshipper. All of us here are true worshippers. Because it's not about singing. It's about service. You don't need a good voice to be a true worshipper. You just need to serve. Teach the gospel you are worshipping. Preach the gospel, you are worshipping. Sing the gospel, you are worshipping. But it is only worship, first of all, because you yourself, you are a true worshipper by the redemptive sacrifice of Christ. You are not a true worshipper because when you sing, people cry. Mm -mm. You are not a true worshipper because when you sing, people get emotionally high. Mm-mm. You know, I love worship. Every time they are singing worship, all my sorrows are over. 
that's not the intent of worship. The intent of worship is not for your sorrows. The intent of worship is adoration, adulation, veneration to the only true God who has saved you from sin. When that worship goes before God and you acknowledge who you are in him, the sorrows will disappear. It's not the song that disappeared the sorrow. It's the remembrance when I remember what the Lord has done, I will never go back anymore. It is a remembrance and acknowledgement that the communication of your faith it becomes effectual when you acknowledge. So in worship, because the words of worship are the words of redemption. Because the words of worship are the words of identification. So as you are saying those words, your mind is remembering what is yours. Sorrow vanishes. Fear vanishes. Sicknesses and diseases become nothing. Mountains keep like rams. Obstacles disappear like monkeys into the jungles. Your, your victory in Christ comes alive. You begin to say, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. No, 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 no. David said, when I was in the, in the jungle, the lion and the bear came and with my hands I tore them. What was David doing? He was acknowledging what Christ, what God has put in him. He said, Goliath, you are just like one of them monkeys. You are one of, like one of them lions. Any face you appear in, you are one of them. The same way I finish the others, you are coming down now. Am I communicating at all? Goliath was a type of Satan harassing believers in Christ. And David remembered having spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of the believer triumphing over the devil and his cohorts. Jakadamata Zilo Mashakayana when you remember what he has done you begin to say to yourself i am not sufficient of anything as of myself but my sufficiency is of god who also has made us able ministers of the new testament not of the later for the later kill it but of the spirit that give it life i'm not going to be an able minister i am already an able minister because of what christ has done in me somebody shout glory somebody shout glory somebody shout glory Sit down, let me push it a little more. Zeko Lamasata Vilo Mozuke Legedisha. So, when we sing, it's not worship because redemption and the resurrection gives birth to true servants, redemption and the resurrection of Christ gives birth to true servants which means by the new birth pretentious hypocritical worship should be in your past by the new birth I service pretense hypocrisy should not be found in your worship. Because the new birth has birthed you into true worship. Which means if you're not serving in truth is because you don't want to. Not because you cannot. It's a deliberate intentional refusal to worship in truth. Present this union. 
That's why the next thing he talks about in Romans 12 is, God has dealt to every one of us. You know, that's the same context. After he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, present your bodies, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Look at verse 3, Romans 12, 3. For I say through the grace given to me, to everyone that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to, to think, but to think soberly, according as God had dealt to every man the measure. So every believer has the measure of faith. Look at the next verse. He now said, for as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. Next verse. So we be many are one body in Christ and everyone members one of another. Next verse. I love this. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Whether prophecy service the presentation of your body a living sacrifice finds expression in service. So if it's prophecy let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith next verse or ministry let us wait let us stay on our ministry or he that teacher all of these are the things that define service reasonable service or he that teacher as i'm teaching you now i'm in worship very deep worship. Or teaching. On teaching. Next verse. Or he that exhorted. On exhortation. He that giveth. So in worship we give. He that giveth. Let him do it with simplicity. He that ruleth with diligence. He that showeth mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Because the ultimate, the high point of our redemption to serve is to serve in genuine love. Love that is without hypocrisy, without pretense. Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. So that action is the list of our worship. Did you observe that in the things he listed as expressions of worship, singing is missing. He didn't say, if singing, let's wait on our skin. That it didn't ever appear in the list. You guys are wonderful. I mean, you know, I, I, I won't lie to you. You guys are wonderful. Wonderful. You don't only sing. You're committed to Christ. Yeah. Now, but in that list, singing didn't even appear. He said, teach, serve, be generous in service, oversee lives, rule, show love, show kindness, be available, and be prompt. Then he said in verse 11 of that Romans chapter 12, not slothful in business. Because those things listed are the business of the believer. So you can't do them with slothfulness. But fervent in spirit. Doing what? Serving the Lord. Is it getting clear? Serving the Lord. True worship has tangible, seeable, realizable, usable actions and attitudes. The next word you will see is the word sacrifice. Present your union a living sacrifice. Where he said a living sacrifice. Whilst in the Old Testament, as we call it in the temple, they will bring animals and kill it and bring it to show ob obeisance to God. In their culture, they, that's how they killed animals. Then they will bring the animals and present incense in the temple. In the new creation, God gave you his spirit. So, 
Your action is by the Spirit. In the New Testament. Your action by the Spirit is the sacrifice. Your actions by the Spirit. Look at Ephesians 5.2. Ephesians 5.2. And walk in love. Even as Christ also hath loved us. And had given himself for us. You are not watching. He has loved us. And had given himself for us. An offering. He himself is the sacrifice to God. For a sweet smelling servant. He is both the offering and the sacrifice. You didn't hear that. Christ is both the offering and the sacrifice because he loved us. So love motivated him to be the offering and the sacrifice. That's why it's called the lamb of God. The animal of God. Who took away the sins of the world. So he is the sacrifice. He is the offering. Jesus didn't offer a sacrifice. Jesus didn't give an offering. He is the offering. And he is the sacrifice for us. Now. So. Brother Paul. Describes walking in love. As worship to God. When you walk in love. You forgive. You do not have a bitterness. You let go of offenses and you just love the brethren. You are in worship. That's why you forgive even when you are still pained. You let go even when you are still feeling the damage is done to you. That letting go is a sacrifice in worship unto Jesus. That is, you two have decided as a man born of Christ to wear the shoes that Christ wore to forgive. When he was reviled, he reviled not. He did not retaliate. Worship. So whilst in the Old Testament they brought animals to the altar as sacrifice, in the New Testament you are the person on the altar. You are the person. It's not your money. It's not your song. You yourself, you are now that sacrifice. Present your bodies a living sacrifice. The body there is the body of Christ. You are now the sweet smelling savour. You. Look at Philippians 2.17. Are you still here? Philippians 2.17. Mm -mm. Put it up. Yea. And if I. Are you following? If I be offered. Upon the sacrifice and service of your faith. I joy and rejoice. With you all. Paul is saying. If they offer me. As a sacrifice. And the offering for you to know Christ, I rejoice. Because true worshippers don't offer things first. They offer themselves. Because see, when you offer yourself, there is nothing you have that you cannot offer. The reason why you are struggling to offer to God and doing mind games with God is because yourself has not been offered. Yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy. I'm not bitter. I do not murmur. I'm not angry. I joy and rejoice. I don't say, is it not because of you that I'm going through what I'm going through? Is it not because of you I'm suffering like this? No. I do not murmur. I joy and rejoice with you all. Why? New birth has made me a true worshiper. So who is the offering? You. Your whole being. Thou shalt love the Lord your God 
with all your heart, with all your might and your soul. So when your heart, your might and soul are put together, what is that? That is the totality of you. True worshippers offer themselves first. Like the church in Macedonia. This they did. Not as we hoped. But first of all, they gave themselves. That's where worship begins. It's not throwing God some cold songs. No. It's you. On the altar of worship. Then anything that comes with you. Becomes a sweet smell. It's you first. You worship God with your spirit, your soul, your mind. Deuteronomy 6, 5 was where Jesus was quoting from. So Paul said, I myself is offered. Look at Philippians 4, 18. When the people sent Paul, their pastor, an offering. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Epaphroditus. The things which were sent from you. So what you now send to me is now an order of a sweet smell, a sacrifice, acceptable, well-pleasing to God. It became all those adjectives before, because these people have already given themselves. The proof that they gave themselves found expression in their sacrifice. They are offerings which now is translated to the incense of the Old Testament in the altar as a sweet smell to God. We're teaching here. Stay with me. Because you can think you are in worship and on the day you see Jesus, you never worshipped once. And that's why I'm taking time to deal with these rudiments, these ele elementary fundamentals. That enables you to fulfill the purpose of God for your life without grudges and faithfully. So giving in church without a worshipful attitude is not giving. Because as you are giving, you ought to be doing it to him. I know that when you give, Men collect the resources. Are you all hearing? Yes. No offering physically goes to God. Because God does not spend dollars. Every time you give, the resources are collected by men and managed by men for the purpose for which the monies are given. And it is used for men. It is used for men. Are we in the house? Yes. But you must give with an attitude of worship. It is the worship in that offering that goes to God. Just like in the campuses, men oversee our operations. You have departments, you have clusters, house centers that are headed by men. The moment you focus, your focus shifts in any way from worship what you are doing is in vain in vain do they worship they worship with their lips but their heart is far you can read this at home Hebrews 5.1 Hebrews 7.27 Hebrews 9.9 all demonstrates these things I'm sharing. The death of Jesus in Hebrews 10, 12 was also sacrifice. The death of Jesus, it was sacrifice. Sweet smelling savour. Dr. Damina, is singing worship? No. But we can sing in worship. So, worship is service. Worship is is sacrifice. Worship is to pay homage to God, obeisance, respect, and courtesy. You know, the way you come to services, 
Do you do it in worship? The way you attended the homecoming and those watching online and in all the various campuses, are you attending it in worship? Lack of respect, lack of honor, irreverence for who is here. You come with an attitude as if you came to do God a favor. You are not in worship. There must be tangible actions to show that courtesy. So, a sacrifice in worship is something that is not convenient. Something that inconveniences you. Remember John chapter 4. He said, in this hour, the true worshippers will do it. In this hour, the true worshippers will do it in union with the Holy Ghost. Worship in spirit. They will do it in union with the Holy Ghost. Or they will do it from the new birth. John 3.3, 3, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3.5, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. John chapter 3 verse 6, that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of water is water. John chapter 3 verse 7, marvel not that I say you must be born again. John chapter 3 verse 8, the wind blow it where it listed. You hear the sound. You can't tell where it's going to. You can't tell where it's coming from. So is everyone that is born of God. Can somebody shout, I am born of God. Somebody shout, I am born of the spirit. Which means that the spirit of God has now tabernacled in your heart. Kayadaba. Somebody say, bring your offering to the altar. No, sir. This is not the altar. No, sir. This is a podium for the pastor to stand upon so that those at the back can see him. This is not the altar. The temple today is you. Spirit, soul, body. Outer court, holy place, Holy of holies. The altar is in the holy of holies. So the altar is inside you. You don't bring offering to the altar. You are the offering on the altar. There's no altar anywhere. The altar is inside the believer. When you worship. When you sing in worship. When you give an offering. Because it is coming from your heart. It is offered on the altar. Not that you go somewhere to be looking for altar. That is foolishness and idiotis at its highest level. There's no altar in any church building. Men are the carriers of the altar. No, you're not. That you are the temple. The altar is inside the temple. So God's altar, you are the altar. So if somebody say, raise an altar, tell him which one. No other altar can any man lay than that which has been laid, which is Christ in the heart of the believer. If I'm teaching good, shout, I hear you. That's the beauty of Bible study. It frees you from being manipulated by charlatans. You are the altar. That's why you pray. And in prayer, you are praying inside the altar. My house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. Where is God's house? You are the house. You are the house of prayer. I'm teaching good. Please sit down. Let me push it a bit. You are born of the spirit. The word genoa. Genoa. It means you are gen generated by the spirit. It carries with it genes, chromosomes, DNA, faculties, and abilities. Yeah. The genes of God. The chromosomes of God. The DNA of God. The 
faculties of God and abilities of God were the constitution of the new creation. In John 4.10, he calls it the gift of God. In John 6.63, he says, uh, the flesh profited nothing. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. They are pneuma or they are Huh? They are ruach. They are pneuma or they are ruach. Is spirit ruach, which is life, which means it is invisible life. It's inside you. John 7 says, Out of your belly, talking of Jesus, shall flow rivers. John 14, 16, I will pray the Father and he will give you another comforter that he may abide with you. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, but you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in. That means I'm born a worshiper forever. Somebody shout, I am born a worshiper forever. Say, I am a worshiper of God forever. Kayanamaha. There is no time I cannot worship. There is no time I cannot sacrifice. There is no time I cannot serve. There is no time I cannot give because it is my nature. I serve naturally. I sacrifice naturally. I give naturally. Why? It is my nature. I'm a true worshiper. God is no more seeking worship. He has found worship in me. Say with me, I am naturally a true worshiper. So it's not about voice. You are a true worshiper because you have the ability to worship, to serve, and to sacrifice, and to give. You came a stingy man. You are born again a generous man. You came with ever stick hand. When you got born again, the evil stick disappeared. You came a self-centered being. Now you are born a selfless being. You came an introvert. Privatized. You came as a self-deluded idol. You are born again now to be an offering for all. The new birth. Your personality has changed by the new birth. Your nature has changed by the new birth. Your tendencies have changed. They've been altered. Forever I am changed by your love. In the presence of your majesty. Yago Badagas. Changed forever. You, that self-willed, that self-conscious, self-deluded, self-centered, self-stingy, tight-fisted, self-acclaiming, self-adoring human being. You cannot do anything that there's nothing in it for you. You only pray well when it is about you. Let's pray for a choir bomb. Father, if a choir bomb like it can be helped, if he like it cannot be helped. Now let's pray for every demon that is touching your business. Here, ba, here, ba, katu, 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 Jackie Chania, Jackie Chania. You even put Jackie Chan inside your tongue, Jackie Chan. It will put, 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 Everything you do, you must look for profit. You can't do anything without benefit. What's in it for me? Now you are a true worshiper. You are not looking for what's in it for me. A true worshiper is not a negotiator. He's a servant. A true worshiper is not a negotiator. A true worshiper is a servant. He is not collecting ransom from God. Say with me, I am born of God. Selfishness is in my past. 
Self-centeredness is in my past. You know, now you have known the truth of redemption. The truth of giving. Then your offering reduced. Your service reduced. Now you know that whether you give or not, there's no curse. So you are giving misingly. You are now using your liberty as an occasion to serve the flesh. And you forget that he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. The new creation. The new creation. You are now a true worshiper. It means the Holy Ghost has now worked on your heart. 1 Corinthians 6, 11, But you are washed. Put it up. And such so as you, 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 you are one, sanctify, justify, in the name of the Lord Jesus, and by the Spirit of our God. Glory, glory, glory. Say very loud, I am washed. I have new habits. I have the fruit of the Spirit. I have the gifts of the Spirit. I have a new personality. Generosity is my lifestyle. Selfishness is gone. Self-centeredness is gone. I am now a new creation. A partaker of God's nature. Glory! It is expected that none of us here shall have a special character trait. Our character is the same. Our spirit is the same. Our nature is the same. The new creation has come. That you put off the old man. And put on the new man. Which is created in righteousness and true holiness. After God. Ephesians 1.13 You are now sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise. The proof of our salvation. 1 John 3 verse 1 and 2 Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Now are we the sons of God. First John chapter 4 verse 4. Put that one up for me. Can we all read together everybody very loud? One to go. You are of God little children and have overcome them because that is where? In you. That is in the world. I thought somebody was shouting in the shout so now you are born again. You are tender hearted. You are compassionate. You are diligent. You are righteous. You are having great conduct. You are now decisive, resolute. You now have a firm foundation in Christ. You are reliable. You are faithful. You are loyal. You are dependable. You are not a betrayer of, of people. No. Your new nature is faithful. Your new nature is loyalty. You are always peaceful. You are not a victim of mood swings. Today you are angry. Tomorrow you are happy. Next tomorrow you are depressed. Another else tomorrow you are jumping. No. Your nature now is consistent. You are always love, joy, peace, gentleness, meekness, kindness. That's your new nature. You don't have mood swings. No. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in the heart. Joy in the Holy Joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy in the Holy Ghost. Stop. Joy in the Holy Ghost. So you see, you can rejoice at will. It is your nature. Spirit doesn't have to fall. Spirit fell already. And any volume you like, you can raise it to the volume. Okay, follow my hand. Follow my hand. Joy in the Holy Ghost. 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 The spirit of the prophet is now subject to the prophet. So, I will pray in the spirit. And I, I, I will pray with my understanding also. Teaching good tonight? Give me three more minutes. Sit down. Three more minutes. Somebody shout joy. 
You are now a true worshiper. Your soul is purified. You are now having a new nature. You are a new creation. Light has overwhelmed darkness. Once and for all. The Lord is the strength of your life. No more weakness. The Lord is the light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Karuabadaya. Kimanagada. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want for protection. He leads me beside still waters. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil because my shepherd is with me. He has never left me. He will be with me forever. Even when I don't see the enemy, he stops him from taking me by surprise. My enemies don't take me by surprise. Even when I'm ignorant of them, there is a rod and a staff in the hands of my shepherd. So count it all joy. 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 Hey! Hey! Joy. In the Holy Ghost. Where are you? Where is joy? Joy. Joy. joy like a river joy come on got joy oh joy like a river yeah joy like a river in my soul everybody I've got joy like a river
all don't have this only we have this yeah 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 the world can't give it the world can't take it away problems can't give it problems can't take it away the joy of the Lord count it all joy when you fall into divers knowing this joy joy Father, thank you that this joy has no bounds and no limits. We rejoice not that demons obeyed us. But we rejoice that our names are written in the book of life. We are sons of God. Behold! What manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not because it knew you not. We present our union. We are true worshippers. We are true worshippers. And we worship in reality. Thank you for grace tonight. Sick bodies are healed. Sicknesses are melting. And skipping like rams in the presence of the Lord. Miracles are released. Creative miracles, curative miracles, restorative miracles. In the name of Jesus, the lines are falling to you in pleasant places. You have a godly heritage. You are like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Your leaf also shall not wither. You bring forth your fruit in your season. Whatsoever you do shall prosper. In the name of Jesus. Great grace is upon you. In Jesus precious name. And every believer shouts that amen on a note of finality. Whoa. Grab your offerings. Let's give and see if we can catch counsel. Ask the counselor for 15 minutes or so before we go. You know that's the crazy thing about Holy Ghost meetings. You don't have control. The spirit controls. Glory to God. Blessed tonight. Get out your honor offering. Those online, the banking details are scrolling. On television, the banking details are scrolling. Radio audience, Mr. Michael Bush, read the accounts for you in another two minutes or so. Lift up your offerings. Father, we give in faith. We rejoice that we ourselves are an offering to you. And so we offer from the depths of our heart an offering for the work of the ministry. And we rejoice in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Don't go away online all platforms. We're going to ask the council in another two minutes. Hit the music. Let's do it. Anywhere on the pulpit, drop your hand. Hallelujah. Open as we worship the risen Lord. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I know I am so secure. Jesus, you're my firm foundation. I put my hope in your holy word.
International UBA 139 26 465. 139 26 465. Zenith is 10 12 36 59 12. 10 12 36 59 12. That's for Zenith and account name remains Power City International. Okay, so you can send us an email or two. It's askthecounselornow at gmail.com or for sponsorship, for partnership, for support. Just dial the program hotline, plus 234, if you're dialing from outside Nigeria. Otherwise, it's simply 0803 275 or using an email or two to Dr. 
Abel, Damina at Yahoo.com. Doctor, of course, is there. My name is Michael Bush. My producer is Pastor IJ Quera and the production team. Global Baba joins us now. Put your hands together for Global Baba, Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental, Mr. Bush. Global Baba. Finally, we got here, man. <laughs> Global Baba, let's just do a quick opening prayers and we get the program on the way. Let's pray together. Father, we rejoice that we have all that pertains to life and godliness in Christ Jesus. And we're in control of our environment as the light and the salt of the earth. So we pray for Nigeria, Kwaibom State, and the rest of the world. We ask that the gospel continues to thrive. Men come to the light of this truth, this gospel, this liberty in Christ. And we rejoice that disciples are raised, souls are saved, ministers are empowered all over the nations to preach Christ. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so Global Baba, we, the last time we were here live, we spent the night right here in Uyo, Kwaibom State, Nigeria. So let's kick off we are here from... This anonymous entry. Hello, Global Baba and the Intercontinental Mr. Michael Bush. Please, sir, since the Bible says faith without work is dead, is it a sign of lack of faith in God or double mindedness for someone to trust God for a miracle and at the same time seek practical alternatives or fiscal steps to provide solutions to his problems? Now, that's not the meaning of faith without works. You just read your thoughts into the Bible. When he talked about faith without works, he was talking about love. That you can't say you have faith in Christ and it does not translate into loving people. Through preaching, through giving to people who are in need, through, through praying for people who need prayer. It's not talking about you believing God for healing. That would be a different scripture, not the one you read. Number two, since God is not responsible for the suffering, so negative circumstances of his children, then who is the cause and why does God allow them to happen? Well, God allowed man to have free will and the free will of man created evil. James 1.13, for let no man say when he's tempted, I'm tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted of evil, neither tempted he any man, but every man is drawn away of his own loss. Romans 5.12, for as by one man, sin entered into the world. So man, by his will, made the choice to cooperate with Satan and create evil. The only part God plays is to deliver man from the problems that man has created. All right, the... The last shot from this anonymous entry is, why is life, global but outside of Christ, painful, frustrating, and meaningless? Because without Christ, life is supposed to be frustrating, meaningless, useless, and totally useless, like animal and plant life, without second-hand value. All right, let's make progress from Uyo Akwaibom State. We come to a backlinking in Ebonyi State. Greetings, my father. My name is Uche Etete. I'm one of your sons in the Lord. Daddy, I've been following you meticulously for some years now. Thank you so much for allowing God to do that all he's doing through you. You are indeed a blessing to me and to the body of Christ. And I must say, the words you speak are transformational. Thank you also, the Intercontinental Mr. Michael Bush. Please, Father, it's a lengthy one, but I really need direction on this. Some years ago... In my former church, just trying to pick that one up, it's really long. One of the Pentecostal churches, an elder in the church, had a vision, and he said God also gave him the interpretation of the vision. He interpreted it to mean that there is God's mandate on my head. Meanwhile, I've had se several dreams seeing myself preaching during large crusades, winning thousands of souls to Christ and, and performing all kinds of miracles with ease. I'll be speaking in other tongues, even in the physical. There was also a time global, but I visited one of my siblings in Port Harcourt. One day I sat down at the veranda, and I saw two people going around preaching the gospel. When they got close to me, one of them came and said, you are a servant of God. He said he has just received a message from God, and that the message is confirmatory. He asked if anyone had told me this before, and, had not, and if I had been dreaming about it. Immediately, I knew in my spirit that the message was from God. That after this time, actually after my youth service, I became sick to the point of death. One day as I was still laying on a couch, I had a vision. In that vision, I saw an elderly man who said he, I should climb a little stick that was on the floor. When I climbed to the stick, we started moving in the air. <laughs> One now. And we moved to a beautiful place. Very beautiful, and everything was pleasing to the eyes. I told him that I don't want to go back, and he said no, that I have not accomplished the mission. I pleaded the more, but to no avail, no, Baba, I cried and cried to the physical also. It was so real. 
Friday last week here in the Boeing State where I now reside because of my work, a lady came and told me the same thing. She said she got the message three times but had a little problem to tell me and she couldn't hold it anymore. She said I have a ministerial office. She asked again if anyone had told me this. She also asked what I was waiting for, that I would have gone far by now in ministry. I became so restless, blah, blah, blah. Though I have been praying about this for some years now, asking God for direction, it has become a heavy burden on me now. I want to be trained by you, Daddy, but I do not know how to go about it, considering the nature of my job, banking, and especially where I now live. I need advice. He leaves a phone number. There's also a need for campus to be, campus of um, PCI to be established in a back league. May God continue to bless you. And thank you, Global Baba. Then the continental was there, Uruan in that. In that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Global Baba, no. He said they were, you know. They were climbing. We do all things. sorts of things, Global Baba, in Uruan. <laughs> in Uruan. Please, you have to take me there on a visit. Absolutely. Global Baba. Well, Pastor Matthew will respond to that email. We will see how we can get into our pastoral institute and help you to grow and fulfill the ministry that you, every child of God, you don't need a vision. Once you're born again, you are called into ministry. From the point of being saved, you start growing. Ministry is a fruit of spiritual growth. So as we begin to train you, ministry comes out of you. Okay, no, Bob, I think we should just leave it there for this edition. Uh, when we come back, uh, sometime in the future, we will be able to restart from a backlinky in a boy state. My name is Michael Bush. My producer is Pastor I.J. Quere. Global Bar is up next as we say bye-bye on this edition of the program. Help me welcome Global Bar, Bar Dr. Abel Damina. The Intercontinental, Mr. Bush. Let's celebrate Mr. Bush again for serving us. Amen. Well, Mr. Bush said in the future because Holy Ghost meetings are happening this week. It could happen tomorrow. It could happen next tomorrow. So we look forward to having everybody. It's, it's, it's an amazing time of growth and just fellowship in the things of the Spirit. We look forward to spending more time tomorrow. Church service begins at 5.30. We have a 9 a.m. service for those of us in the city here. Everyone, today was just amazing. You don't want to miss tomorrow, 9 a.m., 98 Waniba Road, Uyo, Akwaibom State. Tomorrow evening, 5.30, we're back again for our, our, you know, homecoming. It's getting sweeter and sweeter. We want to welcome everybody who, who has come in today, yesterday, this morning, and we're just glad to have all of you here. Looking forward to sharing time with you tomorrow as we bring you word from the, from, from the word of God. Enjoy the rest of your day and be blessed. Goodbye from Uyo, Nigeria. Amen. This 